So welcome to the Defiant Spirit Podcast and this special edition, Wealth 360, where I get to reunite with my brother in arms, Michael Feiner. What's happening, Michael? Not too much. Thanks for having me, B. Pleasure to uh, to get this going again. We've uh, kind of taken a little bit of a hiatus over the past few months. I know we had a busy summer since our last podcast together. And um, why don't you give us a kind of an update of what's going on and where we're headed with this podcast? Yeah, well, we, we had a hiatus, but I will say that you haven't had a hiatus because during this entire summer, you've been killing yourself putting together this Wealth360 Enneagram synthesis algorithm product that I think is quite amazing. Excited to discuss a little bit. Well, thank you. Yeah, I've been working very hard over the summer um, with with my friend Michael Feiner's um, guidance. We've been partnering, Michael, if you don't know, and if you haven't listened to our previous podcast, which we were calling Money and Soul, we're in a work in progress right now, thinking about really focusing on wealth 360, a holistic approach to wealth, or or this idea of we were just playing with it, uh, both sides of the coin, right? That there's the obvious side of our coin, of our bank, of our finances, which is to do what money, you know, at least the face value is supposed to do, pay for things. But it has to be more than that. It has to be deeper. You know, Michael, you work with people all day, every day in finance. And I imagine, and then I'll go back to um, I'll go back to what I've been doing over the summer, but I imagine a good percentage of your time isn't just about the dollars and cents. So true. Over the last probably 20 to 25 years, things have certainly transitioned where, like you said, the obvious side of the coin heads was taxes. It was rates of return, very specific tasks. And now over time, that's become more holistic where people are more oriented toward their why, toward their goals, towards figuring everything out and how to integrate finances with, with their life efforts. Yeah. And, you know, we can get into it in future podcasts. A lot of, um, a lot of that probably comes with, you know, we're living in some of the most affluent times in human history, not that to say everybody's, you know, killing it and doing well and whatever, but compared to every other period in human history, we have a degree of affluence that allows us to go deeper than just surviving, at least, you know, for those of us who are blessed. And we can go beneath that to the, as my teacher, Victor Frankl would say, to the meaning, you know, and we've done a few podcasts on the, the word means and money are used synonymously because, you know, it's means, it's a, it's a pathway to something else. Well, what is that something else? And, and I think that that's uh, what, we're going to be talking a lot about. So one of the ways that I've been exploring money is through the lens of the Enneagram. And for anybody who's just joining us and doesn't know what the Enneagram is, um, if, if you've listened to me before, you know what the Enneagram is, or you've heard it. But uh, if you're just a first time listener, or you're coming from um, the finer wealth side of the coin, the Enneagram is an ancient personality system. Ennea means nine. Gram is a, is a gram picture, like an Instagram picture. So it's a picture version of nine and I'll next time we'll have slides for you pretty slides but you can just google it enneagram and you see that there are nine numbers nine personality types and each one has a name they're different called different things in different systems but essentially what it's saying is there are basic operating systems you're unique i'm unique there's never been one like you never will be another one like you you're, you have a unique fingerprint you have a unique soul print as i say and yet some of the things that we do, some of the hardware, the wiring of us, you know, it's, we're not that unique. Um, there's basic ways to show up in the world to operate. And so that's what the Enneagram really shows us is our operating system so that we can you know, maximize our time here on earth and uh, avoid some of the pitfalls that we probably all fall into over and over again. Anything else you want to add to the, the essence of the Enneagram, Michael? No, I think you summarized it uh, marvelously in that uh, the Enneagram is a way to look at yourself and a way to look at others and, and try to interpret how people communicate from what you've taught me. And I think it is a really magnificent tool to do that. So you're, you know, you're a CPA of all these uh, letters. You have more letters next to your name than I do. Like people can check it out on Finer Wealth. Um, you're a general um, in the National Guard, right? Retired. What, what's the technical term? Right, right. That's exactly right. 
Um, but you, you've been around the block, you've had experience, you've had multiple tours in Iraq of duty. Um, and yet you said to me something very interestingly a while back, you said, and yet the Enneagram has really given me some, some new insight. And that, that was always striking to me. I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, how is this a differentiator from the thousand other assessments that I'm sure you've um, studied or used? Yeah, I think that especially in the Army, we use a lot of different personality assessments, whether it's Myers-Briggs or other similar systems to figure out on the surface what type of personality each of us are. In fact, I think I ended up in the Army because I took a personality test that said I was either going to be a good priest or a good soldier or a good accountant. So I, I got two out of three, I suppose, on the accountant and born Army. into the wrong religion there yeah right Minor detail I, I, maybe i could have made a good priest but you know we all take these tests at different times even my son at american university said oh yeah i take these personality tests but what i found both at myers Briggs and other tests is that they're very surface level they do identify what box we sort of fit into what cohort we fit into but it doesn't really go deep enough to really gain an understanding of not only oneself, but even if I know what someone else is under Myers-Briggs or on another system, I'm not sure it helps me completely understand how to communicate with them. Hmm. With this system, not only is deeper, but it does show the connections, which I think is a differentiator versus the other systems. Well said. Um, in another way for, for me to describe a difference, the difference maker for the Enneagram, and I have deep respect for some of these other systems like DISC, like Myers-Briggs, like um, Strength Finders or whatever they're calling, Gallup calls it now, but they all deal with the how, how somebody does or what, you know, the how and the what, what somebody does and how they do it. The Enneagram deals with the why deals with underneath, you know, the iceberg is supposedly 90% under the water and you can't really understand the direction of the iceberg by looking at above the surface because it might be going against the current. What's happening underneath the surface is infinitely more important. And what the Enneagram has done over thousands of years, coming out of probably Catholic mysticism, certainly some Jewish mystical and, and Sufi mystical <clears throat> um, connections and then lots of modern psychology adapted to it but it's been around for thousands of years really grappling with human nature and why we do what we do and my experience is when i know why somebody does something i can navigate more clearly and effectively which is what you were talking about without a doubt that's probably the most important part of understanding the higher level of, of the meaning yeah, the so so this intention, this motivation, and so for the past um, six months now, at this point, I've been really immersed trying to create a system. <clears throat> excuse me, that I can utilize with both my clients, but also now my partners like Michael, um, who we can use this in a way to help people understand their intentions. And it can be around your finances. It can be around your marriage. It can be around parenting. It can be around, you name it. It's infinite applications. But understanding the why, because my teacher, Viktor Frankl, who lived through the Holocaust and afterwards, re-quoting Nietzsche, but I, I really think he lived it out beautifully. And he said, um, he who has a why to live for can endure any how. And when you know your why, Right? You know the mission, the, the purpose. You can endure with the hows. You can navigate the all the details and the complexity of whatever it is you're talking about. But Michael, you know, I'm a client as well as uh, as a partner of yours. And you've you really talk, we talk a lot about the why behind my money. And so when you know the the it hits the fan and you know the markets are up or the markets are down, it allows me to understand my money to, from a deeper perspective than just all the surface level stuff. Well, as you mentioned, money is just a means to an end. And money is one of probably the most important centers of gravity for fear in people's lives. Really not having enough money. Mm. It's, a, it's a big issue with people, even though, as you mentioned, we're in the most affluent times of, our, of history. 
we have a new a new issue, and that is people living a long, long time lifespan is increasing. That creates a whole new set of financial planning, wealth management challenges and opportunities to understand that because we look at financial planning as retiring at age 65, receiving social security, not working again. That that paradigm is is now over. Mm -hmm. People now have a chance to live so much longer they can really work on this why. You don't have to survive for the first 65 years to get through life and then spend two years in retirement and 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 die. Now you might live to be 100, 120. It's a whole different ball game with more opportunities for self-actualizing and getting up up Maslow's hierarchy a bit. And so, you know, depending on your Enneagram type, you might you'll hear different things than what and what Michael, what you just said. Because for instance, Enneagram type shows us that there are present focused people, there are past focused people, and there are future focused people. So if you're future focused, right? That might play into, I'm just thinking about constantly long-term healthcare type issues and retirement and, you know, all that. If I'm, if I'm a present focused person, I may not be thinking about that. And so different degrees of fear, different types of, of struggles. And, and so, you know, one of the things we've been, you and I have been really fleshing out with this Enneagram is speaking to people where they are, not where, you know, where Michael is and Michael for, for um, all practical purposes, is an Enneagram three. Three is uh, called the achiever, the winner, the victor. Um, really, a you know success driven Enneagram type. So you're going to approach money, like you will everything else, from one perspective. And there's a very, you know whenever I talk with you, there's a very proactive and optimistic, forward facing kind of energy. But I imagine that's not reflective of all or even most of your clients. Well, the, probably the biggest insight you've taught me is exactly that. So, well, I'm a three and I think about the future and I can endure current volatility, for example, in the stock market is down, thinking about an optimistic future. Mm -hmm. Someone who might be an Enneagram six or an Enneagram five or something more presently focused or even focused in the past. Mm -hmm. I, I could discuss all I want about how beautiful the future looks. It does not make them feel any better. Mm -hmm. And I need to give them language to understand that they'll feel safe in the current market today, tomorrow, yesterday, not how the market might look 10 years from now. And that has been a big shift in how I approach things. I have to identify who I'm discussing it with because to be honest, there, in a certain sense, I was a one size fit all. Oh, hey, let me tell you, the stock market does well over 10 year periods. Mm -hmm. Someone who's fearful today uh, and isn't looking to the future, I'm not sure in hindsight that was helping them very much. And I've learned not to do that anymore for people. I might discuss it slightly to put it in perspective, but be more explanatory about how what today means and how we're going to get through today, not worry about. George Jetson in 20 years. <laughs> um, you know, you're not alone. We are all are all wired to see the world through our lens and think everybody's seeing the world through our lens. We just forget. And so this from this reminds us and it gives us a roadmap. For instance, let's go back to that example. And you know, you throw around the Enneagram numbers now very freely because you're um, becoming very fluent in it and, ma and masterful with it in our studies together. And Enneagram six, as you mentioned, is called the loyalist, the loyal skeptic. This is the center of the head triad, the thinking types. And so let's use that example because I think it's a great one. So a six is really built on an anxiety. And it isn't that they're fearful, it's that they're actually, they're, they're honest. Why are they honest? Because we, we live in a rock, right? We're, we're in outer space. We're flying around a hot ball of fire called the sun and we're waiting to die. Like most of us shut that out. You know, it's a buzzkill conversation. It's the truth. But sixes have a harder time shutting out that noise, right? They're, they're, they're like, uh, you remember back in the day, the radio, right? They're picking up frequencies and you're hearing kind of like, you know, shortwave radio from far, they can't always tune it out. So you're talking to them as a three and a three is all about efficiency, effectiveness, results, success. 
which may be true, but their radio dial is going all over the place and all they're hearing is noise and you're just noise in that moment. So what you're doing is, is you're addressing them. And what I find with sixes is they don't need a solution as much as they need a place to process all the noise. And if you want to earn the trust of a six, you just let them process it because a three will get to the answer, boom. Six needs time to get to the answer. And so, you know, what I've seen you do and we've talked a lot about is seeing a six and giving them the space and the time and the place to play out some of those fears. You couldn't have said it better, but it's so important now to understand when I'm approaching someone who I know has certain proclivities, like might be more of a six versus a seven or a three or whatever they may be to understand that there are significant differences mm -hmm. and for them to be helped, which is my job. I better get, I, I love the radio frequency, although I don't know if the younger people understand how radio frequencies work, but yeah, you had to get exactly the right radio frequency. And if you were off by, you know, one tenth of a degree in a radio frequency, you got the wrong station. Mm -hmm. so if I'm transmitting it, you know, 100.7 and someone's listening at 98.5, it does not help. And I think you're right about that, that I need to understand the frequency that someone's on for them to receive it. Now, whether they hear everything or process it, at least they'll have an opportunity to, to be on the same frequency. So to me, I, I'm still not great, of course. Like, yeah, I'm not a magician to figure out what people are like. But I, as I've said to you before, I can think, I don't know necessarily what everyone is at this point, but I can tell you what they're not sometimes, which mm -hmm. helps. I know if they're not like me, I better be very careful on and how I communicate. So I, I like to think I'm improving my communication tremendously with your mentorship. No, absolutely. And you don't have to know somebody's type. This isn't like it doesn't work if I don't haven't had them take a test and because really what it is, is um, Brene Brown, great teacher out there, talks about the difference between empathy and sympathy. And sympathy is coming up onto a hole. You're out hiking here in Colorado. We hike a lot. You come up to a hole, you look down, and there's some poor schlepper down in the hole. And you say, oh, I'm so sorry you're down in that hole. My heart breaks for you. Is there anything I can do for you? And that's sympathy. And that's a starting point. Empathy is coming up to that hole, looking down, seeing that poor schlepper, jumping in and saying, let's figure our way out together. Right. I don't necessarily know. I don't understand what you're feeling in this hole, but I'm not going anywhere. And one of the things the Enneagram has made me do, it's made me think about what's the hole this person is in? Because we all have a hole we get stuck in. Right. Threes, you know, are not iron men and women. They they have holes that they fall into, deep pits that they fall into. It's just a different type of a pit than me as an eight or than you as a six. And so the Enneagram really makes me stop and think about. What is the hole that I need to help somebody dig out of? A great analogy. So that gives us, you know, uh, I think a little more freedom than anybody listening. You have to know exactly what we're talking about. You have to know exactly the type of number. You have to be an expert. You don't. You just need a system. And I think this is a great one to stop seeing the world through only your lens, through your eyes, and to see it through the lens of the other person. Because whether I'm doing marital counseling or financial counseling or whatever kind of counseling it is, I'd say 80, 90% of the time, it comes down to just that off frequency, that missed communication, I'm not tuned in on the radio dial, quite right. Yeah, I think that is exactly right. It's so important for someone to receive something they have to feel comfortable the way you communicate it and they'll turn off quickly if you're not doing it in a way that they like to receive it they may sit there but if they don't receive it it doesn't help anyone and to the extent that you can fine tune and understand how people basically process their information and the communication and and not really trans transpose what we have onto them, mm -hmm. which is what I'm trying not to do the way I approach it, the way they're going to analyze it. Well, I work with people, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, oftentimes in executive coaching and, and, and logotherapy, meaning-centered therapy. And I've sent quite a few um, clients over to you 
And now they're working with you because they, they said, you know, when they heard our, our podcast and they said, I would like to have this kind of feeling of being seen, right? Be seen for who I am. And so, you know, when they come over to you now, there's this like connection that they have and they've reported back to me that they really feel seen and heard in a different light. And it's not about money because it doesn't matter what the product we're talking about, what the widget is, what the, you know, the vehicle, this just happens to be money. I just happen to be dealing in counseling. You can talk, doctors can utilize this and, and lawyers, and it doesn't matter your profession. It's about seeing the other person across the table from you. I mean, but truly seeing them, not some version of them or the way, you know, you see yourself. And that, and that's what we're talking about. Well, as you know, I was stunned. I sent you over that little article. Forget if it was in the Wall Street Journal or or, or some it was somewhat reputable. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a Facebook meme or something that talked about what people were looking for in, in their advisors. I think financial advisors in general. Mm -hmm. When I started reading the article, I assumed that the number one thing was going to be rates of return, investment rates of return, or skill related to financial planning or estate planning, etc. I was shocked, and I think maybe you were too, to find out that those items were far down the list. And the number one item was really communication and comfort level with the advisor, which is a, is a big difference than what it used to be. It's not as transactional, and people are looking for that as you, I'll, I guess I'll do the pun, man search for meaning. Mm -hmm. And they want meaning out of this relation, this financial relationship. I'm sure every type, whether, like you said, it's a doctor, a dentist, your landscape, or whatever it is, you want a deeper, deeper connection to understand what you want. And I can, I can see that because with pe people want to reach their goals and want to be understood. And, and I think part of that is that when you do that, when you connect, they feel secure because we live you know, yes, I think I know for a fact we live in the wealthiest time in human history, regardless of your you know income. But we also probably live at the most insecure time, ironically, with the rate of change, right? I mean, it's just staggering how fast and furious change comes at us, and 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 you know, old systems that once were backbones of security, like religion and I don't know, political affiliations and all this that's all changing or changed. And so people don't know what to grab onto for security. So I think what they're doing in that situation, whether it's you as your financial, their financial planner, or as a doctor is feeling a sense of security. Like this person really can ground me and help me feel safe. I know for a fact that that's what sixes are looking for, right? It isn't just about the money. It's about, I need to feel secure in my relationship with my money. That's what I'm looking for you to help me do. You're absolutely right. It's the alignment that people are looking for, for sure, that they look at a, the world a certain way and they want to make sure whoever they're dealing with understands that and empathizes, like you said, sympathy versus sort of that empathy mm -hmm. that empathizes how, how they look at it and can help them with that depending on how they process the world. Because... I do feel I, I have more conversations about how uneasy people feel about the world than ever before. Mm -hmm. People are scared for a lot of different reasons. And it's not about make, it's not necessarily making enough money or having a financial future, which probably was the biggest issue hundred years ago, right? Survival. That's not the issue as much anymore. And so that's what is so amazing about um, what you're doing because you know, it makes sense for me to be using the Enneagram. I, I'm, you know, doing therapy and executive coaching. And, but for you to do it from the financial industry to say, I want to understand my clients at a deeper level than just the numbers on the screen and just dollars and cents, I, I really think is remarkable. And I'm just excited to be exploring this area because it's, it's blue ocean. There ain't a lot of uh, financial conversations that are really revolving around the Enneagram or deeper insights into the humanity of the person and the meaning they're looking for in that money. I wish I could take credit for any of this, except that you, you, you've you done it all in the sense that we talked about the concept. And once you peel back the onion a little bit to realize how deep this issue was, because money is obviously one of the biggest issues 
that people have, you were, you were able to synthesize all the different pieces, which I think is new level, never been done before, fresh ground. And that is the blue ocean strategy that's so important here. There's lots of Enneagram tests. There's lots of first level things on finance and, and people have talked some basic things. And, and some of this is common sense, let's face it, right? Absolutely. But to have a system and a process where you can delve at it more deeply in a more complex manner and to understand more deeply is next next level genius. And I think you've brought it to a point where it's it's helpful to a lot of different groups, very specifically to what to what we do, because it's a complex area. And that's why we're calling it Wealth 360, because it's really 360. It's it's holistic approach. And you know, and we'll wrap it up with this, but I can have a conversation with my wife now and we utilize the Enneagram and I have one with my son who's in college and we, we really refer to the Enneagram and my mother, you know, his grandmother and she's using the Enneagram and now my clients and my clients are going to you, their financial planner and, you know, next we'll bring in doctors and lawyers and, and so now we have this kind of thread that it's a system we all understand. It's a shared language. It helps us accelerate the process. It helps us feel understood and, and be understood. And I really just think we're at the tip of uh, the iceberg for some, some really important conversations and experiences that the Enneagram is going to be at the center of. For sure. Like you said, it is an incredible tool to bring to team communication conversation to understand, hey, you're an eight, I'm a three, he's a nine, you're a two. All right, let's talk about we're all different, but now we all instantly understand some of what that difference means. Right. And as a result, how to best work it together because each of us as a result has certain strengths and weaknesses or ways of looking at things that, that differ. And we can instantly accelerate the process because we understand those nuances. And that's what we're going to keep doing, uh, accelerating the process and helping everybody understand the nuances, utilizing these in our practices. If you want to learn more about uh, Michael and Finer Wealth, jump over to finer.com. And if you want to learn more about me, Baruch Levy, and the Enneagram, jump over to defiantspirit.org. Um, and stay tuned because we're going to be having a lot more of these conversations and offering a lot, uh, many more opportunities to engage in the Enneagram. So... I think that pretty much wraps it up, huh, my friend? You you are the master for a reason of, of all this, the creator of Wealth360 and, and uh, Defiant Spirit. So we look forward to uh, doing this uh, next week. Well, you are my partner and we'll continue to explore both sides of this coin. So until the next time, take care. Okay.